Module 4, Making the Connection. Welcome to Module 4, Assess. This module focuses around the essential question, how do I know what the students have learned? Assessment in online courses. Assessment is really about answering one question. How do we know the students know? Good assessment is aligned with course objectives and provides evidence of how well students have learned what the instructor intended for them to learn. Effective assessment has the following properties. It is aligned with course objectives and activities. It is regular and ongoing. It is varied. It provides students with useful feedback. Aligning objectives, activities, and assessments. Your choice of assessments should be guided by your learning objectives for the course. Activities and instruction should be designed to provide students with the necessary means of learning and practicing the knowledge and skills that you will be assessing. This is sometimes called the assessment triangle, image courtesy of Carnegie Mellon. When all three elements are aligned, it ensures that your course is working as intended. One model that can be helpful in aligning your objectives, activities, and assessments is backwards design. In backwards design, you begin with the end in mind, considering what enduring understandings you want your students to walk away with. To follow a backwards design process, you start with the assessments and end with the design of the instructional activities. Identify the desired results outcomes, goals, and objectives, in other words, what you want students to learn. Identify what would be acceptable evidence that the students learned what they need to. Assessment. Another way of thinking of this is how would students be able to demonstrate to you that they learned what you set out to teach them. Plan the instruction and learning activities. Backwards design is further described in the book Understanding by Design by Wiggins and McTighe. You should also consider aligning the type of assessment with the type of objective you're looking to measure. Higher order objectives that require students to analyze or evaluate, for example, require a different type of assessment than those that ask students to memorize. Regular and ongoing assessment. There are two types of assessment, formative and summative. Summative assessment is a type we are all familiar with. It sums up the student's performance at a certain point of the course, whether it be three weeks into the course or at the end. However, the need to monitor student learning between summative assessments has led to an increase in the use of formative assessments. Formative assessment is used to gather information about where students might be faltering in using that information to adjust instruction. It does not involve assigning grades. The additional resources area in this module provides some resources to learn more about formative assessment and how it can be implemented. Varied assessment. Students vary in the way they prefer to learn and in their skills, strengths, and weaknesses. Varying the manner in which you assess students allows them multiple ways to demonstrate their learning to you. For example, some students may have a good grasp of the course content, but may not be good test takers. Providing opportunities other than multiple choice tests for them to demonstrate what they've learned provides you with a much more accurate picture of what they know. Rubrics and grading criteria. In addition to providing a good range of assessments, it's also important to provide substantive grading criteria in clear grading rubrics. Remember that particularly in an online class, students can only work with what's been put into the guidelines. They may ask questions, but the instructor misses the opportunity to really go over the assignment in detail. Within the hybrid class, you want to do your best to reduce class time on such things as explaining assignments where possible since you have less time than normal to work with. The assignment guideline provides a clear means of how to plan, develop, and deliver a solid assignment while the grading rubric helps the student understand the expected level of work to attain the grade of his or her desire. 
It also provides a clear explanation of where the student needs to work when the assignment is graded and returned. Three types of supporting materials are essential for helping the student to best prepare and execute course assignments. Providing students with useful feedback. Good assessment is helpful for you and for the student. In order for assessment to be helpful to the student, several factors need to be in place. Identify clearly the purpose of the assessment and what you expect from them in terms of performance. Clearly explain ahead of time the criteria of which you will evaluate them. Rubrics are great for this. Provide feedback as soon as possible after the assessment. Relate feedback to the objectives in the criteria. If this seems overwhelming, remember that feedback does not have to be individual and labor intensive in order to be useful. You can save time by using such methods as providing feedback to an entire group instead of to individuals, by having students self-assess against a checklist so they are providing their own feedback, or by using peer review. A few words about cheating. Cheating is a major concern in any classroom and becomes even more of a worry for most faculty when they start teaching online. While we'll never be able to eliminate it completely, there are ways of structuring assessments to make cheating more difficult. Use some means other than tests to assess your students, case studies, papers, projects, etc. Overall, have a clear cheating and plagiarism statement in your syllabus and in each of your assignment guidelines. Require ongoing participation in discussion boards. This will allow you to learn each student's style of writing and thinking so you can compare them to performance on higher stakes assessment. It is also more difficult to cheat on this type of activity. Make sure you clearly explain what plagiarism is and what it looks like. Do not presume students know what it is and is not. To determine if something is plagiarized, be sure you have substantive proof before addressing the student. Turn on Turn It In for all assignments and discussions. Tests. Assume that all tests are open book and write questions accordingly. For example, write questions that address higher order thinking skills. Put a time limit on tests so students don't have time to look up all the answers. Create more questions than you need and put them in a pool. Moodle can randomly pull a defined number of questions from the pool. This means students won't have the same test questions. Randomize question order and answers. Papers and projects. When assigning topics for papers, have students relate the content to something in their personal or professional lives. This makes it much more difficult to filch someone else's paper or buy one online. Have students turn in projects and papers at different stages, such as an outline, draft, etc. Questions. Please feel free to post them in questions form or send me an email, lance.eaton at regiscollege.edu. Thank you very much.